Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another one of my how-to videos. Today we're going to be discussing how to make a water catchment system. Now when I was in the Peace Corps in Panama, I made about 70 of these things in my small mountain town. Um, I'm not an engineer, I didn't receive any special training on this subject. I just sort of figured out how necessary it is and I figured out how to do it. So I know you guys can too. So here's where I put my system, uh, right by the back door of my house. I also have my compost bin right here, which is just getting started. We uh, actually just moved here, and so I built these two necessary systems in order to prepare for the planting of my garden, which I'm going to stick right in there. This is the best place for it because it's not in direct sunlight, and so it's the best place for the type of plants and vegetables that I want to plant. Now in order to make a water catchment system, you're going to need a couple of uh, necessary parts. Um, the first is about 20 to 30 feet, depending on your roof, of um, PVC pipe. I have made water catchment systems with pipe as skinny as one and a half inches, but I would recommend at least three inches or above. You're also going to need a couple of elbows. There's one elbow there of uh, 90 degrees, a 60 degree elbow, another 60 degree elbow, um, the tubing that connects them, and then of course your tank. Coming out of the tank you're going to need a couple of small um, pieces of faucet hardware. The tank that I chose to use I, got, I bought uh, used from a car wash. This used to hold car wash soap. As you can see it says corrosive and I kept that sticker on there just because I think it's funny. Um, I scrubbed it out really well, I let it dry, I filled up with water, I scrubbed it out again, I let it dry, I uh, put some, uh, some dish soap in there, scrubbed it out again, uh, and then let it dry. It's, for me, this, it's really important to get this as absolutely clean as possible. Now I'm not going to be drinking out of it uh, um, like the people in my town back in Panama because I am fortunate enough to have uh, running water in my house but I want to use it to make an, a drip irrigation system for the garden that's going to be over there and um, I've been working pretty hard to get the pH of my soil exactly where I want it which is a little bit tough because there's so much clay and sand in my soil so I don't want to raise or lower the pH um, by having any tainted water that might have a little bit of car wash soap in it so I really gave it a really good scrubbing uh, the way that you know that it's uh, it's uh, all the way cleaned out if you're going to use a secondary barrel like mine um, is if you stick your head all the way in it and you don't smell any any soap at all, no no odors, it's absolutely clear, then you let some uh, water get in it, let some water sit in it, and then taste the water. If you can't taste anything, there's nothing in it. Alright, so this is how you prepare the gutter. What you do is you basically just cut a line lengthwise all the way down the length of the pipe. Try and get it as straight as possible. You can see right there how I cut my uh, cut my pipe. And then basically all you do is you separate the two ends there and just jam it right onto the roof. It can be a little bit difficult. You might need to stick some, some wooden dowels or some screwdrivers or whatever in there to hold it open for you while you ooch it onto the roof there. Just get it onto the roof uh, any way that you can. Uh, it takes a little bit of elbow grease, but eventually you'll get it on there. The reason you want to use three inches or larger is because if you get PVC pipe that is um, that's that's uh, thinner than three inches, it can be difficult, but not impossible, to separate to, to actually pull apart the jaws of, uh, of that pipe. As far as what part of your roof you want to select, I would not suggest uh, selecting a part of the roof that has um, any kind of tar paper or shingles or anything like that. I selected this part because it is metal sheeting. Uh, doesn't really matter in my opinion if it is painted because uh, the elements will have worn off pretty much everything that's going to come off anyway. But um, I'm lucky enough to have this piece of uh, metal roofing is, is not painted at all. It's just straight corrugated tin or whatever it is. So, um, so it's not going to taint my water or raise or lower the pH. Now right here I put a 90 degree angle and that is followed by a short length of tube and then a 60 degree angle, a longer length of tube, another 60 degree angle, and then that part of the tube enters the barrel. Um, the reason I use two 60s in here instead of making 90 degree angles is that 
it uh, encourages a more uh, a more direct water flow. You don't really want to have any kind of standing water in the system at all because that can breed bugs and stagnation. Um, and so you, you want to sort of encourage the, any water that's going to be in the system at all to, uh, to, to fall down in there. Um, as far as the gutter, you don't need to attach it to the roof in any way other than the clamping motion of the pipe itself. Um, it'll, it'll hold itself up there through all kinds of, of rainstorms. Trust me, if this kind of system can withstand the storms of Panama, it can definitely withstand anything that Florida has to throw at it. Now why did I use duct tape instead of PVC glue? Well, I kind of want this thing to be removable in case I want to locate it to another side of the house or if I want to take it with me when we move again. Um, it's a much better system to use PVC glue if you're sure you're not going to be moving this system at all. But uh, duct tape works just as well for my purposes. Um, if the duct tape comes off or gets corroded, I can just hop up there on the ladder and use another piece of duct tape. So I don't mind the way it looks. and. Uh, this will last for a year or more, so uh, it's just part of the regular maintenance of the system, of my system. Now the hole going into the barrel was smaller than, um, than the pipe, and so rather than, uh, rather than cut open this hole, what I did was I actually heated up this pipe over my stove. I have a regular electric stove, I don't have a propane stove, so I just turned it on high, rolled it around a little bit, um, over the hot stove and as this plastic actually warmed up it got soft and I could just sort of bend it in like this and uh, it fits you can see it fits completely around in there um, it was cool enough that I could actually mold it with my hands I, I didn't want to grab it for a very long time because it was pretty hot but you don't need to melt this you don't need to put it against the coal or anything just hold it a good three or four inches above your stove for maybe a minute or so and it will get malleable enough to mold now this is how I prepared my barrel. You can see here that there's sort of this lip where the barrel top, which is not removable, comes down here. It gets skinnier here and then fatter again. What I did was I cut using my sawzall, but you can even use a hacksaw or a machete is actually what we used in Panama. I cut it exactly right here at this skinny spot. So what I can do is after finally taking the top off and getting all the way through, I just invert it and it fits perfectly like that. Um, this is really important if you want to keep the water in good stead. You don't want bugs to breed in it or anything like that. Just have a good top like this that seals firmly. And it's almost, it's almost like it was made to do this. It just fits absolutely perfectly. Most barrels you can do this with um, if you're careful. In order to install your faucet, cut a small hole with a drill or a uh, heated piece of metal and just get it in there just long enough or just large enough rather that you can uh, stick the pipe through. What I have here is I have just your regular half inch plastic ball valve and on the inside is a male threaded piece and that actually sticks right through it here and then I screwed it onto here. As far as a gasket I used an old piece of fabric here on the inside and, um, and some caulking material on the outside. Now the verdict is still out on whether or not this is going to hold up permanently. What we found in the field is that small squares of uh, rubber strip like you'd find in an inner tube, a bicycle inner tube, work the best for gaskets. Um, basically use one on the inside and one on the outside. I don't have any on hand now. If this fails, I'm going to go track some, some rubber down and uh, use one on the inside and one on the outside to really, uh, really weather strip that. I, uh, I honestly doubt that this is going to last more than a month or so, but uh, we'll see what happens for now.